Bay Area, welcome to Talk Back, representing your issues, your voices, your words, and your concerns, looking at local art and politics in your neighborhood. And here's your hosts, Anthony and Michelle. What up, Bay Area? Welcome back to Talk Back. That's right. Hola, hola. Welcome back. So happy that you're here with us again. That's right. Talk Back. It's a brand new show on PCTV. That's right. And today we've got a great show lined up. Right. Uh, we have some two actually great guests. We're going to be talking about Latino artists in the Bay Area. That's Very right. Very exciting. We'll be talking to Mabel Valdioso, who is a independent Latina TV filmmaker, filmmaker and TV producer. I'm sorry. Valdioso. I like how she said that. And we also have <laughs> Ray Patlan. He is a world-renowned master muralist here in the Bay Area. He's also a teacher at Laney College. We're going to talk to them about Latino wow. artists here in the Bay Area. Master muralist. That's hey, exciting. that's right. But first, if you guys want to learn more about Talkback, you need to check out our website, our website yes. talkbackcentral.com. Central. You can get some more details on our show, what we've got lined up, sneak peek, behind the scenes, pictures, fun stuff like that. So make sure you check it out. Or send us an email, too. Let us know if you have any ideas or what you'd like to see on the show, because you know Talkback is basically up to you guys. It's That's right. It's what you guys want to see. Now, today's topic, what? what? Today we're talking to Latino artists yeah, in the and, area. And so tell, them, tell them what the... This Latino to fashion be, that we will see, share with you today. This happens to be her area of expertise. She thinks she knows everything about everything I, but what she doesn't know is Latino that a brother did some research on his own and I might surprise some people out there hey because he's coming into the camera he's trying to convince you but don't, <laughs> don't be fooled over here I have my own he passion can, he can roll his R's but that's that's we'll get into that later okay so check this out we might salsa dance or something get a, a little, little loose, bit but right now you guys check out this feature on Bay Area artists Latino artists here in the Bay The San Francisco Bay Area is an important hub for expression that attracts hundreds of Latino artists from all over the United States and Latin America. In this episode, we visit the studios and houses of these prolific artists based both in San Francisco and the East Bay and examine their views about the state of contemporary Latino arts. Well, if you want to know about my work, uh, it's focus on my culture, my roots, my religion, uh, my family. It's kind of very personal. And it's focus as well in everything that I care and I worry for and about. And lately, I did a series of self-portraits, which they have been getting a lot of response from uh, serious people. Uh, and they portrayed myself with projected images of the Mexican history and the Mexican icons that I identify the most. Uh, of course, it's Latina related because it's about the Mexican history and the Mexican icons, uh, but I'm not trying to reach only the Latino community or the Mexican community, but to go farther, you know, it's pretty much for everyone to, to learn a little bit about uh, what's in the mind of somebody like me. <laughs> We'll explore the aesthetic choices and issues that are relevant to Latino artists working today in the East Bay and compare them with the San Francisco Latino arts community.
siento que el trabajo de un artista no se limita a una sola línea de trabajo. En mi caso, en los últimos años, siento que he recibido mensajes que vienen de mi propio cuerpo, de mi espíritu. Sé que vienen un poco más allá de mis raíces. Entonces, cuando salgo a colectar cosas, a recolectar, soy como un cazador que voy por las playas o por las calles encontrando objetos, cosas que me sirven para ensamblar piezas. Pues si camino por la playa y de repente encuentro unos troncos, unas plumas solas, me llaman, las escucho, las uno, las pego y el ensamblaje de las cosas se hace prácticamente solo. Me siento que hay una conexión con mis antepasados. A lot of my work tends to be much more political in the sense that it talks about the First Amendment, which is um, the rights to express ourselves as women and the rights of um, religion or none. And it also speaks about the church and or um, issues around gender. Still being abstract with using abstract images or subtle images. I believe that, that we have a, a lot of access to a lot of technology and many of the, of, the, of the artists that are working with technology is about how cool, cool, quote unquote, is, no? This is not about how cool it is, but it's about me trying to say something within my own identity, to say something, who I am and what do I want to say. I've been doing murals for about 35 years now, and uh, this is about halfway. This is actually probably the most fun part of the mural process for me, and it's beginning to repaint over areas we see need to be uh, stronger, bringing things forward as we're doing it with the images here. People who uh, use this space really like the uh, approach. They like the idea. And that's the important part because I always feel like when we're working, doing public art for someone, they're the ones who are going to have to live with it. Es una manera de crear mensajes, mensajes que van directamente hacia la gente, hacia la gente común y corriente que no tiene nada que ver con galerías o que no tienen nada que ver con concursos de arte pero las imágenes que uno presenta en la calle de alguna manera tiene tiende a ser así como parte de las imágenes visuales que se hay generalmente son comerciales ¿sí? dirigidas a que la gente consuma pero también hay una parte donde los art la gente como yo la, la gente que produce arte pues dedica imágenes para que piense la gente ¿no? Do we find similarities among the work of both San Francisco and East Bay Latino artists? What we can say is that we have discovered the fascinating journey of a plethora of Latino artists who have succeeded in developing their voices and have influenced the American culture in their own right. Okay, welcome back to Talk Back. You just saw a special feature on Bay Area, Latino Bay Area artists, and we happen to have two of them with us today. We have Mabel Valdivieso and Ray Potlan. Welcome, you guys. Thank you. All Thank right. You. So, Mabel, I'm really actually interested in starting out with you. I know that you had uh, a, a big, heavy hand in producing this feature. Oh, yes, the future in Latino artists. Uh, it was an interesting experience. Um, I wanted for a long time to connect with um, the plethora of Latino artists uh, here in, in the Bay Area. And uh, uh, I have a lot of friends in the community, but never really like 
try to make something that was more in a, in a reportage format. So what the process was interesting because um, initially there was a discussion about what angle, what, you know, what was the perspective of this, and the, we thought that we perhaps would do um, a uh, reportage on like what is different between um, Latino artists uh, here and uh, say the East Bay versus San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And however, through the process, it's interesting because it was almost like making a mini documentary mm -hmm. of sorts mm -hmm. in the sense that um, we we decided not to go with the script, but go with the flow. Actually, just take a chance and find the material, find the perspectives that we were going. Um, I just have a, an idea that I wanted to like see really the uh, artists at work as much as I could. Like I wanted to see them actually uh, in action. You know, right. like um, doing their paintings, doing their murals, doing mm -hmm. their uh, the performances. Uh, have them like doing what they are, you know, best at, and and, and through that um, there was a, definitely we decided to go through um, their studios. Um, many of them were in their studios doing some work, while others were perhaps like Ray Patlan, for instance. He we found him in the Green Line Institute where he was actually doing. Um, um, he's doing a, a series of work there, very interesting as well. So it's really neat then that, and I'm thinking this comes probably from your background as, as an independent filmmaker and doing documentaries that I think most people are interested in, and we have the privilege here on Talk Back that we get to do this That's a right. lot, is it's it's not scripted, it's, it's not so cut and dry, mm -hmm. and I think when we're addressing the Latino community, and I think a, a lot of people might already know this, they make up more than 30% of, of California, so sometimes that... Uh, kind of glosses past people that there's so many Latinos in the Bay Area. But um, so tell us when you were putting this, um, this segment together, because this is something that I really liked that out of the segment, was that when I think about Latino artists, there's kind of a traditional medium. There's muralists. Ray mm -hmm. Patlan is a muralist, musicians and so forth. But it was interesting of different ways that people were communicating their, their artistic endeavors yeah. as Latinos. Definitely. And um, that was one of my uh, interests as well. I, I wanted to see what exactly they're doing right now. How is the contemporarily globalized uh, kind of world that we're embedded into, how they are um, uh, what kind of influences and kind of what kind of practices they are doing and it, yes it's true that there is um, a lot of um, what, what's happening I notice in general is that many of the artists that are working today at least in the Bay Area and um, I, I remember Ray mentioning that there is like the uh, you know the the Bay Area and perhaps San Francisco has the biggest concentration of uh, artists mm -hmm. in, in right. you know as, and that's very interesting so you have like in a blog you have I don't know you have mm -hmm. 10 20 <laughs> it'll be interesting to know that but um, uh, I think that there is th there is a tendency for many artists um, working today Latino artists working today and not just stay in one um, medium but explore many other mediums right. um, and these are especially um, the ones that are more into visual art visual artists um, I have the a opportunity of meeting um, many of them and it was just like amazing that what they were doing right they were doing performance uh, they're doing uh, painting yeah. they're doing sculptures yeah, they're doing assemblage they're doing right, right poetry okay. um, so many so many things that influences um, okay. you know the the other mm -hmm. possible other yeah exactly right. Right. Are now we burning go. in your seat right now right. <laughs> well, right let me get to you we go from filmmaker to muralist uh, first let me start off by saying um, I grew up and going to the La Pena Cultural Center in Berkeley you grew uh, up? Yeah, I did grow up, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I still got a lot to do. But um, and I just remember thinking um, how beautiful it was, and how you know it almost felt like I was going into a, a whole nother land, you know, with this beautiful mural. Um, and you've been an OG in the game for a minute now. Why murals? And you know, tell us a little bit about the Balmy Alley and and uh, what that was all about. Well, I developed, a, I guess, a passion. 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 <laughs> <laughs> when I was very young, trips to Mexico from Chicago, middle of summer, in a Dodge Dart, wow. right? <laughs> Traveling with my parents through Texas and Oklahoma and all this. And the murals in Mexico were just like so hard hitting, you know, it was just impressed me. Mm -hmm. So 
You know, I'm sorry, when you said the murals in Mexico, I can't, and here in California, we have like a million dollars that go towards the arts, and in Mexico, their government puts 30 million towards uh -huh. the arts. So I can imagine that great experience for you yeah. as a nice young little, person. Nice little factoid right there. I like that. Well, it's, I mean, it's, like, imagine you had the privilege of going to Mexico. You saw all this. It really molded you, yeah. I'm sure, as an, as an artist. Anyway, uh, Balmy came about because Patricia Rodriguez, one of the mujeres muralistas. And, and now she was the, in the feature. And now the curator of the Mission Cultural Center Gallery. Um, and I were talking one day about this project that some people in New York, some artists in New York had put together to show in galleries and also to do silk screen workshops around U.S. intervention in Central America. This was in the 80s. And so we said, but you know, we should do something. This is primarily a Central American populated mm -hmm. community, the mission. But we didn't want to do anything long distance with New York or Rhode Island or wherever else they were doing this thing. Artist Call it was, that's mm -hmm. what they named it. So we said, let's do something here. So we organized some artists. I did some grant writing. She contacted local uh, landowners and, and residents in Balmy Street. And we, we, in nine months, we created 25 murals with 36 wow. artists all around peace in Central America. That was the theme. That was the theme. That yeah. is some major organizing right. quickly to get that many. I know uh, when I worked and volunteered for the International Latino Film Festival, getting all of those people organized and working with different venues and different organizations is really challenging. But I think, or I'm hoping, you know, having peace be at the core of that, that people really wanted to be involved with something of that nature. Yeah, I, I also think there were, you know, a lot of, so there was a lot of support, not just in the community, but kind of worldwide. Later, as I traveled around and did presentations, took exhibits to different places, Paris, Mexico, uh, Amsterdam, people knew more about Balmy than any Americans I spoke to. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Incredible. There's a problem there. Yeah. 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 I, remember, I remember that I was doing a, a search some time ago uh, because I wanted to, uh, um, I wanted one p particular mural from uh, Balmy, and I know that Balmy has like changed, you know, it's not ever the same, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I was searching the internet for Balmy, and I kept <coughs> going into the, you know, uh, you know, uh, Europe, anywhere in Europe, like they were talking about Balmy and all these different languages, and I was like, wow, this is really <laughs> impressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, funny. Now, mm -hmm. you've, you've, uh, you're also an instructor at Laney College, but you've been teaching uh, for years, and I'm sure your influence can be seen all throughout the Bay Area. Now, what are some of the, the patterns and styles that you see of the new generation of muralists coming up? I mean, is it the same or different? Well, there's a number of folks really taking traditional kinds of forms, and I hate to say, you know, aerosol art, spray can art. Mm -hmm. It's traditional, but it, it had been for a while. I mean, it's very, you could see it everywhere, right? And there's a number of people like Disney and, you know, I can go on and on, who, uh, who have taken this form and really refined it mm -hmm. to a point at which it's now fine art. And, I mean, you know, you could say, well, maybe some of the street stuff of the past was too, but these guys have really right. focused in on creating uh, uh, some just incredible forms of, of, of art out mm -hmm. on the street with spray and sometimes right. brush too, both. Right. What are some of the so what are some of the things that that you're teaching your class or it, it's it's a mural it's a mural, mural class that that will be given this summer uh, for four days a week and there's pretty no intensive. prerequisite or no none at all it's from ten to two thirty which is pretty intense and so part of it's part of it's lecture and then the other part is actually creating murals for the campus oh, so it's a little bit about you get to hear the history about mm -hmm. a little bit of the history and then you actually get to mm -hmm. I, have, I have a lot of young cousins like in Oakland <laughs> Barry and all over the place and I always try to get them involved in art classes and they always okay. say the same thing to me I don't I don't know I don't know how to do this stuff yeah. I'm not an artist and I think People say that a lot, actually. Like, you yeah. need to have some kind of, I don't know, you ha does anyone know if they're an artist? Like, how do you know? Right. How did you guys know when <laughs> starting out that right. this is something you wanted to do? Mm -hmm. Is it just kind of trial and error? And then how mm. do you... I don't remember um, being, I don't know, it's interesting, but I, I do remember clearly I was, I'm probably the only artist in my family um, uh, that really got into doing this. I think that my brother also wanted to, but really didn't 
Take have that, that extra step. step. Yep. Um, and I don't know what it took, but I remember clearly I wanted to always be the best student at, you know, mm. but because my, because the only reason why I wanted to be the best student, uh, you know, was because I knew that that way I could convince my father to, to like <laughs> give me oh, side money to like I take see. this art class. Mm -hmm. And I to see. me that one <laughs> right. was, uh, you know, doing ceramics for instance, right? And that was like ceramics from, um, you know, uh, cu cultural icons that I was so, you know, in touch with my, you know, Peruvian far, my Peruvian legacy. What's interesting too wh about what you're saying is there's, a, I think, a distinct difference. Like myself, for example, my brother and my sister were all first generation. I know, uh, Mabel, you w grew up in Peru versus Ray, you grew up here in... South side of Chicago. <laughs> South side of Chicago. Right, so right, okay. I'm wondering if there's a difference because I think like when I speak to my mother, she's like, oh, we never had that kind of stuff. And right. so there is a difference in, you know, maybe growing up here and, and others. Well, other look, we could talk about this all day about the passion. Yes. That's what I passion. found with Mabel, <laughs> it's the passion. But right now, we need you guys to check in with Charity she is on the streets. You guys are talking back. Check her out. Thanks, Anthony and Michelle. You're here with me, Charity Twos. We're on the streets in San Francisco, checking in with folks about how they feel like the Latino arts adds to the vibrancy and culture of the city. Come on and join me. Let's hear what people say. Hey. <laughs> They're running from us, man. They're running from us. <laughs> que, que les tu favorita? Artista. Oh, it's um, Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> and Jennifer Lopez también. Jennifer Lopez. Um, I think Frida. Yeah. Maybe Tito Fuentes. I like the Cubans. I like. Uh... Who's your favorite Latino artist? Oh, nada. Nada. I mean, the only one that I know that I can remember right now will be Frida. And she, um, she was just a strong woman with a lot of political conviction, but it was her own, mm -hmm. you know. And she lived her life the way she wanted to. But um, political statement, I don't think there is a, any Latino that is actually making one at this point. I mean, I haven't seen it because mm -hmm. I mean we have J Lo, which mm -hmm. she's just an artist, but she's not making any political statement that I know of. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you like to hear? What would represent what you hear is kind of going on? Needs in the community? Well, the needs in the community will be the children and also uh, violence against women. So we don't have like a, a Latino activist mm -hmm. taking care of this. I mean, there is probably an, a lot of them, but we, we don't know. We haven't heard. Right. So okay. Okay. that's what I think. Thank you. All right. Why do you think art making is important for the Latina culture? Uh, it kind of gives us a way of thinking of how things used to be in the past, uh, like contemporary ideas of uh, how we are living now in the, in the city, being urban, and also just kind of giving more perspective on, on our way of life. It expresses who they are and where they come from and how the community is and how everybody's like into that. That's our culture. Right. I feel good about it. I'm proud of it. A lot of it I feel is, is mixing with the, the music and the art and the culture. That's all. Just saying that you're cultural is a political, you know, way of thinking. How do you feel the murals serve the community? that they're public art that pretty much explains and educates and, uh, and shares the history not only to the Latina people but to the greater community. And back to the studio. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Have a good night. Hey guys, welcome back to Talk Back hey. in the studio. That's right. Charity was out there pounding the pavement talking with you guys and you guys were talking back. And I've got to love Charity. She gets out there and she gets the buzz going. That's right. I'm so envious that she gets to go out there and interact with you guys because I just have Anthony pretty much to hang out with all day. But Anyway, she loves <laughs> it. And we also got to uh, talk to a couple of great guests today. Yeah, we got great guests. We got some a breadth of knowledge on Latino artists and what That's they right. do and all the different mediums and where you can see uh, Latino art in the Make Bay sure area. you check out Balmy Alley. Where was that again? Oh, no, you should be able to tell us, my friend. You did your research. 
Anyways, <laughs> where was the treat? And, uh, 24, uh, 24th at Balmy, B-A-L-M-Y. You can get all those uh, details, though, on our website. You go to talkbackcentral.com. That's right. But, yeah, it's, if you go over there, you know, a nice sunny day in the Mission is a great community. You know, mm -hmm. take a little stroll. I think they've done some uh, maintenance, kind of upkeep to it. Some they've flowers, some, brick, some bricks. Yeah. yeah. Kind of warmed it up a little our bit. Our producer says there's a great juice spot right next to it. So get a juice, hit Balmy Alley. It's Agua Fresca. Check that out for sure, yeah. That's right. So next week, what do we have going on? Next week, actually, we're going to be looking at... Uh, the Vietnam War and its impact here in California. In the Bay. So that, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually, I don't, I don't know too much about that. I will have to do my research. That's on that right, one, that's so right, that's right. We cover everything here at Talkback. So again, check out talkbackcentral.com and see what everything's about. Thanks for joining us again today. Ciao, ciao. Peace.